Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Block Daz. Office Block Aiden. We are Office Block Daz Sports Edition. Doing all types of different kind of sports. Dipping it's our toe into different things that people want to see. Here's a first, isn't it? This is the first one. How fast would Formula One go at the Indy 500? Are you familiar with the Indy 500? Not at all. all right, in the, the Indy 500, um, I'm not familiar with it, but I know some people have transitioned from Formula One to Indy 500. Nigel Mansell being one of them. I'm um, pretty sure Nigel Mansell went to the Indy 500 and so did uh, Alonso. Fernando? Fernando Alonso, yeah. I'm pretty he's sure he did. Back in the... He's back in Formula One now, yeah, but I'm pretty sure he had to go Indy 500. Oh. And if I'm not mistaken, I think someone like Alonso may have done, I think he may have raced one day in the Formula One, flown out to the USA, and then raced the following day in the Indy 500. Really? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, or an Indy, not an Indy They're similar race. cars then? They look similar. Yeah. Um, as far as like the, uh, the, the the aesthetics sort of image of it is. Yeah. You, sorry, if I shown you an Indy 500 car, do you know what that is? You'd probably go a Formula One car. I don't know. But if you I'm, see yeah, them next to each other now like this, they probably look very different. Yeah, no, I know, because I, I know what a Formula One car looks like. I yeah, you're I big into the Formula One. Yeah, I reckon I'd know yeah. that it's not. Yeah, I used to be big into Formula One. I've been to a few Formula Ones. I've been to Singapore and I've been to uh, Abu Dhabi a couple of times. I've been to Abu Dhabi a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, you have, that's right. Hmm. But I, once the noise of the car started coming I down, I, I kind of lost interest a little bit. I think I'm. it's getting a little bit boring as well. Yeah, I it think. is. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah, same. They're not the same, same way. Sort of, same, Max Verstappen's yeah, one like took over. ten he's, in a row. So. But yeah, <laughs> so but he's stupid. incredible. He's an incredible driver. Yeah, he always has he's just, been. He's dominating. Yeah, and he's young, young lad as well. But uh, let's let's get into this one. How fast would Formula One go at the Indy Five Hundred? Mm. We'll learn a bit about Indy Five Hundred yeah, yeah, as will. well. The Indianapolis 500 is one of the most prestigious race events in the world where the cars reach over 230 miles per hour and race nose to tail for 200 laps. But what would happen what? if you put an F1 car... Yeah. 200 laps? Yeah. It's I guess in the 500 means 500 mile. How long does that last then? Well, 500 mile, you don't, unless it's 500 kilometres, I don't know, but I think 500 mile, 200 laps would probably be... Yeah, it's probably, probably close to like yeah. three, Five, four hours. It's probably 500 miles, yeah. So you're probably talking 500 miles, probably three hours, yeah, at them speeds. 200 they miles an hour. They must get proper knackered in the well, car. Well, 200 miles an hour would be, you're not going to go 200 miles an hour all out all, all the time. No, I know. Because that'd be two and a half hours then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But like slowing down and going around bends and stuff. So you're probably talking keeping three. Keeping your neck intact. Pit that stops. That? Pit stops yeah. and all that. Probably talking three, three and a half hours, yeah. Yeah car on the grid would you be able to go even faster we've done some research to find out first of all thanks very much to omaze for sponsoring this video where you have the chance to win a corvette stingray c8 son. and a vip experience to the 2022 indy 500 you can enter at omaze.com forward slash driver 61 indy cars and formula one cars look pretty similar both open wheel formula cars lots of downforce and both run turbocharged v6 engines I love the sound. Yeah. However, there are some pretty big differences. IndyCar is a spec series, meaning that all of the cars run the same Dallara chassis, the same aero package for each circuit, and have the choice of two engines, Honda or Chevrolet, a bit like the Corvette from earlier. On the other hand, Formula One is a constructor championship. The cars are made by the teams, with only some components shared between the teams, like Williams using Mercedes engines and Haas running Ferrari components like the steering wheel. IndyCar run the series like this to save costs for the teams and encourage closer racing, meaning there are very limited opportunities to spend more money and gain an advantage over other teams. Where Formula One teams spend hundreds of millions on wind tunnel testing and CFD to create their own aero package Packages, sometimes with new ones for each race, IndyCar have to run the same body, floor and wind packages as all the other cars on the grid. And this leads us on to another difference. IndyCars run on both ovals and road circuits. Okay. And as you can imagine, the aerodynamic and suspension setups need to be very different to accommodate this. IndyCar has three distinct aero packages, short oval, speedway and road configurations, each with different wings, brake ducts and suspension setups. The engines are also pretty different. IndyCar run a 2.2 litre V6 with twin turbochargers. They produce between 500 and 700 horsepower as the organisers specify the maximum boost pressure for each race, allowing them to control speeds and keep the racing close. Despite Formula One using a smaller 1.6 litre engine with a single turbocharger, the manufacturers have been in a development race for many years, spending hundreds of millions on creating the most efficient engines on the planet. 
These produce over 1,000 horsepower, with 160 being donated by the hybrid system. And the same goes for the aerodynamics. Manufacturers have been competing to produce the most efficient aero packages for years, fighting for every... I went to, I went to a Formula One um, team to go and see them. We sponsored them. And I was a part of the sponsorship was team, uh, Williams. Oh yeah, yeah. Really? So I went down to Williams, and uh, I can't remember where they were in the UK, um, the Oxfordshire area, and uh, we weren't allowed in certain parts of the building because they were, it was all secretive. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, who am I going to tell? No, <laughs> it's one of them. You never know. Though, when you can't see it, you're not allowed in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's certain things they were doing. They were working on the cars. That, Mark, just, that doesn't surprise me. Though, yeah. To be fair, yeah, just weren't allowed in. You don't want to copy what you're doing. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. tenth of a second around the corners and maximizing speed down the straights by minimizing drag. Whereas IndyCar use the same system for entire seasons and only change it when a new spec car is released. In 2020, Colton Herta set the fastest lap ever at Indy with an average speed of 237.986 miles an hour. But F1 cars have far more downforce, more power and wider tyres, nice so car. surely they would go faster at Indy. Well, it's not as clear cut as that. The best like for like comparison we have is at the Circuit of the Americas, where IndyCar in road spec ran a 1 minute 46 lap time in 2019, and Formula 1 just a few months later ran a 1.32. So Formula 1 has a 14 second advantage, but that's on a circuit. What about an oval? Despite what- The fact that like yeah. in racing, 14 seconds is a hell of a lot of time oh, as it's, well. It's, it's, it's a lot, it's a long way. But what you've got as well is that's on a road track. I think these cars, these um, Indy 500 or Indy cars- Better for ovals. I think they're more designed for ovals. So yeah. I imagine the internal engines that are going around it. Well, I think like, going around the say Formula One's car's got better downforce. Downforce, so turning that, and stuff like that. Turns, yeah. Whereas this is just going round yeah. and round and over like that. Whereas you probably have, like before they had the cambered wheels and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's the the Formula One car like gets better every single year though. Do it does. I mean? like, you get... I'm sure the Indy car is the same. Yeah. Hmm. I'm wondering how, how does, someone's going to have to let us know in the um, in the comments because we're not really familiar with Indy racing. No. And we're not really up there with NASCAR. What's the biggest sport? Is it NASCAR or Indy racing, or is it the same nah, fans? Well you, you, well, you said the Indianapolis 500 was the biggest, biggest race. Yeah. Well, I think I think the Indianapolis circuit, um, uh, where where it's held, is the largest sporting venue in the world. Yeah, I think it holds more it holds people. Like two hundred thousand. Yeah, it holds more people, and then I mean, you get some. It's a bit different than a stadium, though, isn't it? It's very different than a stadium because I think other ones are, are on that list of ma major things. The things like Royal Ascot, mm. you know, the horse yeah, racing yeah, horse and horse races. racing places, and all things like so the tracks. Probably are going to get more people because you got all the way around. Got a lot more space. Whereas the stadium is kind of like round, you know, around the size of a field. Exactly. You know? yeah. But yeah, it's uh, I think it's the largest stadium or largest. What, sport what, do you reckon it will be a good idea to make like a massive stadium around a track? And then if you were like sat at the top, so you could see the whole the track. whole track. Yeah, but then it's then it's going to be really high, isn't it? Probably better watching on bloody yeah. TV. You still be out there. Still, it'll be quite a little cool bit. to yeah. see it. But I wonder what they. Let just me know. It'd have to be a huge yeah. stadium, though. Eh? Let me know what's more popular: is it NASCAR or is it Indianapolis? Uh, Indiana, Indy, yeah. Indy, 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 Indy car racing. I wouldn't really know to be yeah, fair. Indy racing. No, I wouldn't know. Many people think ovals are incredibly tricky to get right. From a setup perspective, the cars need minimal drag to be quick down the straights, but also have a lot of downforce to carry the speed through the corners. For minimum drag, IndyCars use their Speedway setup. This has a simplified single element rear wing with almost no wing angle. The front wing follows a similar trend with a single element and a simplified so no DRS. This allows them to reach up to 240 miles an hour on the straights, which would destroy any F1 car, even in Monza spec. F1 cars, of course, could develop lower downforce wings and remove all of the smaller downforce producing elements. But there is one other trick IndyCar has that is currently illegal in Formula One, the underfloor aero tunnels. They are used to accelerate the air under the car, creating a lower pressure and sucking the car to the ground. This produces lots of downforce with very little drag. Currently, F1 regulations state that the underside of the floor has to be flat, and so more overbody downforce would be needed to hold the car stable through the corners, at least for this year. On an oval, Formula One hybrid systems just wouldn't work. It's tuned to perform best on a circuit where there are lots of braking zones that can be used to regenerate power, but on an oval, these regen opportunities are fairly sparse. They could 
utilize time in the pit lane to run the engine and recharge the battery a bit like they do in f1 races and could also do a similar thing when in a slipstream behind another car however even with these Whoa. times the car would be at around 850 horsepower for most of the race rather than the full 1000 the setup also has to be different to excel at only turning left, so IndyCars use a few clever setup parameters that F1 cars don't have. Look at this, they set the camber of all four tyres to lean to the driver's right, meaning that as the car loads up into the corner, all four tyres are producing as much grip as possible. The entire car wants to turn less. They even offset the steering to ease the load on the driver and produce less tyre scrubbing through fast turns. The anti-roll bars also play a huge part. They can actually be tuned on the driver's steering wheel. During a stint and as the cars burn off the fuel, the balance in the car changes. So where a stiffer rear bar would help the car when it's heavier, it may need loosening off for more grip when the car is lighter. And the way this works is genius. The system turns these blades, which are specifically shaped to vary the stiffness of the car. The shape means that if the blade is in this orientation, it is flexible. And if you rotate it by 90 degrees, it becomes much stiffer. So the drivers can vary this to fine tune the car. The drivers <laughs> also may want to change the balance of the car into the corners. They do this with a weight jacker. It's a small hydraulic ram that is placed on the rear right suspension. If extended, it changes the cross weight of the car. This is how the car's weight is split between the four tires. If you extend the rear ram, this puts more weight on the front left tire. This can make the car have more grip at the front or the rear, depending on what the driver wants at that point in the race. As I'm sure you're aware, F1 has none of these things, quite simply because they aren't needed for circuit racing, where the cars are pretty symmetrical in setup. The oval would also require much longer gear ratios than F1 cars normally run. Where short again, in like them circuits, does the, does the road actually go up? So yeah, it like would do. Yeah. Well, that's why you look there, doesn't it? Like, it's Probably a bit of a bang, like bang that. goes up. Yeah, I, think, yeah. Yeah. I think even NASCAR are like that. That's what. Yeah, I, yeah. I would have. I, th yeah. I think I saw it in NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. I saw it last yeah. time. But. Gear ratios are preferred for better acceleration. However, the F1 regulations say that the gear ratios have to stay the same for the whole season, nice but we'll ignore that for now. So in terms of straight line speed, the Formula 1 car has the edge. They have about 150 horsepower more, and providing they develop a specific aero package for Indy, they could produce as much downforce as an Indy car with similar drag. But it would come down to the corners, being able to carry the momentum through without sliding and scrubbing off speed. One big advantage of the F1 car is the tyres. They are 20% wider on the front and 10% wider on the rear, so the theoretical grip is higher. However, there is one sticky point, the setup. Indy cars are designed for ovals and are understandably very good at it. For an F1 car to match an Indy car through the corners, the entire suspension system would need to be redesigned to accommodate the left hand camber and the sort of fine tuning needed to compete on an oval. But this is F1. If there were to be a race at Indy, the F1 teams would invest so much time and money that catching up would be entirely possible. It would be a challenge for the teams, but that's something they are used to. So I say Formula One could do it. I don't think it would be by much, but I think they would be quicker. More power, more downforce and similar drag. It seems entirely plausible. But it goes without saying, Indy cars are incredibly capable and are unbelievable to watch as 33 cars fly around the circuit at over 230 miles per hour. And thanks to Omaze, you have the chance to not only right? win yeah. a VIP experience to the 2022 Indy 500, but while you're at Indy with a friend, you get to ride on board for a pre race lap watch the race from the vip suite and get the tour of the pit and garage and as part of the winning prize omaze are also giving away a corvette c8 stingray it's got nice 495 right. horsepower and hits 60 in 2.9 seconds i'd look good in a corvette so, yeah yeah i reckon most I think, people would no? i think a corvette's kind of like your car but do you think so yeah do you know what i think is and what i want to get go for it a nissan gtr nissan gtr nice car do you like that? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a car that's that's highly stolen around this area. Just not so not a buyer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got the anti -te anti burglary techniques. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a yeah, it's interesting it's video. Finished, yeah, yeah, it's finished yeah, it's finished his advert yeah. uh, on maze. But it's uh it's interesting to see when you get two sports that are very similar 
mm. how they can compare and what the differences are and what goes into like they're building so a car. similar but also very different, very different at the same yeah. time and yeah. it goes to show the the, the, the uh, technology that goes into these cars the finest technology to make them work for what they want them to work yeah. for like going around an oval yeah but it's uh, I, do, I do like and the change uh, an actual track <laughs> like changes mm. the 14 second difference between the cars yeah. that's a lot yeah and I love I love the technology that goes into I it I wonder if it. like an F1 driver could drive an Indy car and an Indy driver could drive an F1 car well, as I said before Nigel Mansell did it and yeah, also, I know. Um, yeah, I know. Also, like, Alonso, Fernando Alonso did it. Yeah, obviously they could, like they can do it, but if you just like if a Formula One driver right now just got put in an Indy car, like do you reckon he could drive it yeah, as well as other yeah, Indy drivers? Yeah, he'd probably be he'd probably be very similar to like Selp, so how to drive. Yeah. But what you've got, I think Nigel Mansell could learn won, to do both. Obviously. I think Nigel Mansell won the title in the Indy Indianapolis racing, in the uh, Indy racing. Yeah, hmm. I'm pretty sure he didn't. I think Matt, I don't know if it was his first season, but I think I'm pretty sure he won it. But I don't know if Fernando Alonso did. Someone's going to have to let me know. I didn't really pay attention with Fernando Alonso. I only paid attention when Mansell went because obviously he was British. I didn't even know Fernando Alonso went. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Fernando Alonso. I'm pretty sure it was Indy Racing. Yeah. Uh, but again, I might have it wrong. But you never know. Never know. You never know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Something different again. Yeah. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.